Okay, boxing fans, we're doing the post-fight for Floyd Mayweather versus Marcus Maidana. Floyd Mayweather just about scraped through with a majority decision against the 12-1 to 1 underdog Marcus Maidana in one of the hardest fights I've seen him in in a very long time. If you didn't know, I did a bit of drinking that night, and once I had consumed enough Dutch courage, I made a stupid bet that... You know, with Kingy, Ryan and Paul, like, if my Donald won the fight, I'd get his name tattooed on my arse. That meant that the next 36 minutes of the fight was just a nervy, horrible experience for me until the scorecard came out and I just about scraped through myself. Holy shit. So, most people seem <clears throat> to think that Floyd won by a round or two or that it was possibly a draw in what should have been just a showcase fight for Mayweather. Let's be real. My darn up going in 12 to 1 underdog shouldn't have had a shot. It turned out to have quite a few shots. There's a, one of the cards was ended up at 117, 110, but you know, that was a shocker. I didn't see it that way myself. And I was biased! <laughs> Looking out for my own ass! Didn't. But anyway, the fight was, was really close and. We're just going to look at some facts, figures, stats, and statistics. Now, looking at the show stats, and that's, you know, the compu box for, of Showtime, Mayweather landed slightly more punches in this fight, 230 over 12 rounds, whereas Maidana landed a staggering 221 shots on Floyd Mayweather, 185 of which were deemed power punches by show stats. I think that's amazing, and I'm just going to go through a few of the rounds, a bit of a round by round for you because it's a special occasion. My Dawn in round one landed 26 punches, Mayweather only landed 16. Round one, I gave to My Donna. The second round was a close round, and it was also a swing round that I've put later on. My Dawn landed 19, Mayweather landed 21. My Donna was the ring general, forcing Mayweather round. A lot of people gave that round to My Donna, but I've got it as a swing round to Mayweather. Round 3 was a close round, but I gave it to Maidana. He landed 22, Mayweather only 20. Round 4 was a swing round, Maidana landing 15, Floyd landing 14. Round 5 was a huge Maidana round, Floyd landing just 8.8 punches, and Maidana landing 20. In round 6, Floyd landed 19. Maidana lands 23. So after 6, I've got it basically 5 to 1, I think. If that's right, I think I've got it 5 to 1. And basically, in the first half of the fight, as you might have I've, I've realized, Floyd gave away the ring generalship to Maidana in this part of the fight. He was backed onto the ropes at will, put under immense pressure. And even though he evaded a lot, a lot of the shots to the head, he took a lot of damage to the body and a lot of people didn't give him the credit he deserved when when scoring body shots but that's you know that is what it is people don't know how to score fights properly that's what I've worked out round 7 was made with a special round he landed 29 punches to 14 of my Donna uh, round basically round 8 9 10 11 and 12 were all Floyd Mayweather rounds where he outlanded uh, my Donna significantly. There's only one round that was a swing round. Well, in fact, there's two swing rounds. Round eight was a swing round. My Donna landed in 23. Floyd round, uh, landed in 20. I gave that round to uh, my Donna, obviously. And um, one round was a f swing round for Floyd. Round 11, Floyd lands 20. My Donna lands 17. And the end of the result was 115, 113, Floyd Mayweather. Two big swing rounds to Floyd, one to my Donna. Uh, thanks for bearing with me while I waffled through all that. We're going to bring in a few of the guys, and we'll see how they saw the fight. We'll start with Ryan, no holds barred boxing. So, Ryan, you're with mm -hmm. me, hopefully, or you've not fell asleep. No, I feel like I Why did Mayweather have so much trouble with my Donna? Well, I... First, I, I don't think he underestimated him, so I think that can be ruled out. Like, I know sometimes people say things like, oh, you know, you must have underestimated him. But, you know, at this level, at this high level, that would be naive to do. And we all know that Floyd, he is a tosser, but if there is one thing that Floyd isn't, is lazy. He does, he does turn up to the gym, he does do his work, 
you know, he's a he's a dedicated fighter and he's he's always stayed in shape and all of that. So I don't think he would have underestimated him. I think that he is slipping. I think he's slipping and I think he has done for a while now. And um, and that's because of age. And I think he's just always struggled with that or no 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 that that would that would make me um, that would make me completely wrong because in the in the pre fight we did I said that he doesn't struggle with fighters like Maidana so maybe I was just wrong in the pre fight analysis we did because I was just about to say that he struggles with fighters like Maidana like he did with um, the Castillo fight but my actual words before the fight were he has only ever struggled against Miguel Cotto and um, Miguel Cotto and um, Luis um, Castillo back Jose Luis Castillo all those years back and he sort of struggled a bit with Oscar De La Hoya who tr- but he, he, he wasn't necessarily trying to um, uh, you know um, De La Hoya and Miguel Cotto didn't do what Maidana and Castillo did to him which was completely wrap him up against the ropes and just pound to the body for a whole 12 rounds so I'm sort of half right and half wrong um, maybe I just underestimated how good he can deal with fighters like Castillo or Maidana and maybe they will work that out, I mean look at Miguel Cotto he's a boxer puncher and a very good boxer at that and look at Oscar De La Hoya one of the most talented fighters of his generation yet they they both fought a similar, similar style against Mayweather which was to go to the body and rough him up on the inside which is something that Okay, they're both body punches. They both have always gone to the body, but you know we we can't call them aggressive fighters or or um, you know body um, uh, you know um, snatches or anything like that. that. That's not how they fight. But they did against Mayweather. So maybe some boxers and some trainers are just clever, and they know Floyd Mayweather's weaknesses. And whatever the answer is, Mayweather made on and knew what it was because that's what he went for for the whole twelve rounds. He wrapped him up on the ropes and he threw something like 900 punches throughout the fight. So clearly the way to beat Mayweather, or at least the way to almost beat him, is to um, pressure him endlessly and barrage him with punches, even if you only land, say, 15, 20% of them, because that's obviously what um, you know keeps him backed up and unable to do what he wants to do. Yeah, I agree. What did you think about the scorecards? Oh, they were hideous, but they always are. You know, a lot of judges out there are complete twats. Um, the the only draw, the only uh, judge which had it close or had it right was the one who gave it a draw. I scored it a draw, and I thought that seven rounds to five to either guy was fair. If it was me, and I don't think I'm being biased, but maybe I am. I, I don't think I am, but I would have given it 115 to 113 to Maidana if I had to choose a winner. But we all know that in boxing they tend to favour the champ, uh, especially if the champ is Mayweather. And in that case, it's always going to go to Mayweather. And he might have even edged it, because I know loads of people said that he edged it. But I always wonder whether people, are they really scoring it for Mayweather or are they just going yeah yeah my boy won like I said earlier in another video we did where I said about football fans sports fans are very fervent they're very um, psychologically inept a lot of them uh, sport has literally replaced war it's the ultimate co- you know war is the ultimate um, combat the ultimate sporting um, uh, what's the word uh, rivalry if you want to call it that and sport has essentially um, replaced war for us human beings so so you can see the tribal mentality of sports fans so I do wonder a lot of the times if if people are just giving fights or scoring fights to their guy or whatever but I don't think I'm like that and I think that Maidana probably edged it but the score that like Burt Clements gave of 117 to 111 that means he only gave Maidana three rounds I gave Maidana four of the first uh, uh, what was it? Four of the first five, I think, I gave him, and then two of the last eight. So, yeah, something, something's not um, not right there. Mm, yeah, I can pretty much agree with that. Bad night at the office with this Ryan, or was it you know Mayweather on the on the decline? Well, did I say that at all in the pre-fight? Um, oh no, I know what I said in the in the pre-fight. I said that 
I think we can probably forgive Mayweather for beating Jose Luis Castillo because it was his first fight at lightweight. Bad day at the office. You know, he's just moved up to lightweight, for Christ's sake. That's another five five pounds. He'd, he'd been at super featherweight for, like, what, four years or whatever. He moves up. And he, and he you know, takes a, a, the, probably the toughest beating of his, of his career up to that date. Probably including amateur boxing as well. And, uh, yeah, he might have just had a bad day at the office. I, I thought that Castillo definitely won it by a couple of points. Um, but that was 12 years ago. And since then, he's improved remarkably. And, you know, he was devastating opponents. Yeah, cherry-picked opponents. He was, dev- he was a devastating uh, cherry-picked opponents from, like, 2003 to about 2006. And then he started fighting guys like De La Hoya, who, you know, well, just De La Hoya, and then, like, he retired after the Hatton fight. Um, so, yeah, so he got better and better and better. But now... You know, I just said about the cherry-picked opponents, and a lot of people are going to pick up on that comment and like call me a hater or whatever. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll um, we'll move on to that in a minute. But yeah, was this right. a bad day at the office, or Jackie's he's on the decline? No, he's on he's on the decline. He's he's thirty-seven. He's on the decline. And I I've, I've read a lot of statuses on Facebook um, because that's a good place to talk boxing on the relevant pages. And I've read a lot of people commenting saying things like. Um, I saw it in Ali, I saw it in Leonard, I saw it in this, you know, older guys, much older than us, and say, you know, and Mayweather is coming to the end. He's obviously at the end, and somebody else wrote on my page saying something like, I think Mayweather's um, downfall will be his obsession with money, because he's obsessed with money, and what do these fighters do when they, like, require cash? They just keep coming back and coming back and fighting and fighting. He retired in 2007, he returned which is what I always claim, I because it's true. He returned when Vernon Forrest was dead. Shane Mosley had lost to Margarito. Margarito had been banned because of the glove incident. Uh, Miguel Cotto had been smashed up twice by Margarito and Pacquiao. Martinez and Williams had moved up to middleweight. So he came back, and all of those guys who were all in the lit line, ready to fight him after De La Hoya, had all gone. They'd all been mysteriously got rid of. And then he came back and he fought the likes of, you know, Marquez, which Taylor made for him, and etc. So, um, I think that he's definitely on the decline, and I think that, um, you know, he showed once that he was, um, uh, you know, um, out of love of boxing when he retired, and I don't think it'll be long before he needs to retire again, but I'm not sure if he will. Not with his, um, you know, money habits. Okay, well, there's only one more question I have to ask you. Mm. Is he the best ever? No, and we did this in a in a video we did before on your channel, uh, and I won't go on as long. But he's not the best ever. He, he's not a African American hero, you know, like some people support their their boy, you know, like uh, Mancunians used to support Ricky Hatton and. Uh, Filipino support Manny Pacquiao and African Americans support their boy Mayweather and it's an insult to African Americans it's an insult to Archie Moore and Sugar Ray Robinson and Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis and Ezra Charles and all of these um, so no um, he's not the greatest ever he his his career has it is he is almost he's very cleverly perpetuated this sort of lie it's a bit like um, it's a bit like selling something to somebody and calling it something something else so it's a bit like selling roller cola to somebody and calling it coca cola and because the person's an idiot and doesn't know the difference and he really loves his cola and he's drinking his co- he's drinking his roller cola and thinking it's coca cola but he's being sold he's being missold a product which isn't really the product he's paying for and I think that's what a lot of people have had done to them with Floyd Mayweather I don't think they actually know um, you know this is going to sound really insulting because I know loads of people on my page for example who love Floyd Mayweather <laughs> so they're going to be unfriending me after hearing this but I think a lot of it is that people have never heard of like Henry Armstrong or never seen any footage and even I haven't really but I, I do trust the historians that's something which I do I trust historians I trust their word if it's good enough for them, I think it's good enough for me. You know, call it blind, you know, blindness or whatever. 
Jimmy McLarnin, he's got a better record than um, Mayweather. Uh, Benny Leonard's got a better record, but most people don't know these people because the footage isn't available. Um, their careers haven't been perpetuated like the lie because they're never on telly. I'll, I'll finish it with this. For years and years and years, I used to think that the likes of Ben and Eubank and Lennox Lewis and all were the best British boxers. And do you know why that is? Because if you go to Google and you type in best British boxer of all time, all you will find is a load of old shite written by the Daily Mirror, the Daily Mail, the Sun and all that, which have compiled lists by total arseheads who don't who've never watched boxing for a long time, you know, maybe five years, and they've just and they've just gone to they've gone to somebody else's article and read that, and they've written number one Eubank, number two Lewis, number three Ben, and that's it. And it wasn't until I watched this program on Sky about 15 years ago with um, Jim Watt, and in it he mentioned his uh, best British boxers of all time, and he mentioned Jimmy Wilde and Ted Kidd Lewis, and I'd never heard of them, so I Googled them and then read up all about their careers. It's like, Jimmy Wilde is the best flyweight of all time. Ted Kidd Lewis fought Jack Britton 20 times or 22 times or whatever. And it's only when you dig deep into all of these things that you sort of start uncovering other things. But how many people ever get to hear those names? Nobody. So Mayweather, if you hear it enough times, best ever, best ever, best ever, you probably will start to believe it. Yeah, well, I guess that's going to be hard to really beat that, but I'm sure we're going to get some other people trying. So I'll leave you for a minute and um, we'll bring in Rory from Picks from the Paddock. So Rory, mm-hmm. how are you doing pal? Yeah, that's it, Rory. Hope you enjoyed that little chat there with Ryan. <laughs> Gotta little, love yeah. Ryan. Gotta love Ryan. <laughs> so uh, go on, let's go back to the be- to the beginning. Why did you think Mayweather had so much trouble with Marcus Maidana? <sighs> I think, you know, Ryan pretty much covered everything under the sun, really. But um, it, I'd put it this way, that my dad didn't bring anything to the table so he hasn't fought before. So you couldn't, I, without discrediting my dad, I think it's more of a case that Floyd's on the decline. It was Floyd's errors and Floyd's mistakes that made it such a close fight, rather than my dad bringing something dynamic and new to the table that completely shocked him mm-hmm. um, personally I'm, I'm not saying all that though but I did have the fight when I looked at the fight I had the fight one maybe two rounds to Mayweather um, but it was one of those fights whereby if someone was to turn around and say oh well my down has won it by one or two it wouldn't be one of those where you you throw your arms in the air in uproar you know, I think to be honest, the fairest, fairest way of scoring it would have been the guy who gave it a draw. Um, the guy who gave it one one seven one one one. Clearly, just hit copy and paste from the can fight. Um, I'm not not having that at all. Um, yeah, just, I just don't think my dad brought anything to the table that he hasn't faced before, and just the blame in terms of the decline just lies solely with Floyd, really. Yeah, I guess so. So, what did you think about the scorecard? You touched on it briefly. Um, the first two, you could argue for a draw. You could argue for a, a few points, either to Mayweather or a few points to Maidana. But the one one seven one one one, just you know, it, it's a debate for another time. But this is why those that love the sport of boxing also equally hate the sport of boxing. It's you know, you look at a fight and even to a, a relatively, I'll be honest and throw my hands in the air and say, I'm relatively new to the sport of boxing. I only really got into it sort of early to mid stages of Ricky Hatton's career simply because it was a local lad and I followed him and then that kind of broadens your eyes to the world of boxing and you kind of take it from there. Um, but if someone who knows as little as boxing as, as I would can score it relatively close. A guy who's paid to be at ringside, he probably sat at hundreds upon hundreds of bouts, scoring it as a professional judge, can give it that, then he shouldn't be in the business. 
Yeah, well, I guess so. I'll agree with that to an extent. Yeah, I'll totally agree with that. Uh, so, did you reckon this is a bad night at the office of Floyd, or is he on the decline? Um. Well, I guess you, I guess you'd say yes to both. Um, it was a bad night at the office for Floyd Mayweather. The reason being because he's getting old. Um, you know, it happens to all of us. It, you know, you can only fight at an elite level for as a boxer for so long. You know, you've got to give him credit and say that he's been doing it year in, year out for goodness knows how many years. And you know, the bloke's thirty-seven. Um, it's yeah, it was. He's just he's he's been fighting at an elite level. He's been doing what he does year after year, and at the age of thirty-seven. Many a fighter has retired years and years in advance of that, and it's just it's just the human body, it's the human condition. It deteriorates, it ages, and all of a sudden you're just not as sharp, or you're just not as quick as you used to be. You're not as you're not as on the ball as you used to be. And I think it's just a case of we're we're seeing that now with Floyd, and I think kind of looking past this fight as well. Because of that, there'd be a handful of guys that I'd probably pick to beat him um, after his display. Khan would be one to at least give him a very good run for his money. Um, Thurman would be another, but that's not happening anytime soon. And um, without something like a broken record, I'd actually now fancy Pacquiao's chances if it was to ever happen. But again, I think that's 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 not happening either. Um, if I was sort of management and I was looking at Floyd, I'd seriously sit him down, him and Lennon Ellaby and he'd have a serious talk and go, right, retirement should be an option. Um, I know a lot of people won't, won't agree with me, but one thing I would probably say is that he won't retire because if he retires on a fight like that, it'll ruin his any sort of credibility. Mm-hmm. Good points, good points. So my next question to you is, TBE is he the best ever? <laughs> um, then the fact that I'm just getting old probably gives it away a bit, but I'll keep it short and sweet. No, uh, but simply in one sentence, the, it's, the way that I describe Floyd's career is, is is this: there's too many people he hasn't fought that he should have. That that's it. Some boxers are in it to sort of find the best out there. He's not one of them. He's in it for the money, and that really says it all. Yeah, I think he's admitted that as well. That's what that's what most people will always say. He's always admitted he's only in it for the money. It's only recently, in the last year or two, that he started saying he's the best ever. So, and I don't think he's, his record stacks up, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But I'm going to leave you there for a minute, Rory. Oh, one, so before you fire on one something, I also wanted to kind of bring up was this thing that Floyd decided to come out with at the press conference afterwards at the post-fight, that the reason he fought like that is because he wanted to give the fans what he, what they wanted. I'm sorry, Floyd, you've not been giving the fans anything they wanted for the last ten years, mate. I'm not buying that for a second. Yeah, yeah, that's a total that's a total lie by Floyd. He just giving the fans what they wanted. He, he he had bitch fit about the other guy wearing punches gloves and shit. So why so why why were they all of a sudden fighting a dog fight? Yeah, I don't get that. We'll bring in next Paul, and that was Rory from Picks from the Paddock. So, Paulie, are you there? Yeah. Oh my God, it's Paulie. <laughs> so, um, that was my Paulie Malinacci, but impression, okay. Bit shit, but okay. So, <laughs> what did you make of the Mayweather performance? Why did he have so much trouble with my daughter? A few reasons, to be honest. One, he's getting old, as we've said. Two, me, me, he, he underestimated me a, a, my Dana a little bit. And three, my Dana gave him absolutely no respect and fought with no respect. And that's what you've got to do. All the fights you fight for, you may have they all be before they even get in the ring. Robert Guerrero gets showed, may have too much respect. His dad certainly didn't respect me, but Robert Guerrero himself got in the ring. Showed too much respect and got absolutely bad. Uh, Canelo Alvarez showed me another too much respect and got absolutely screwed. You go into the ring, sort of half scared of Mayweather, from the fighting, 
And I don't mean to get in the sense that they're sitting in the change room shitting the pants because they know he's going to beat them senseless. They're scared because they know what a big reputation he's got. They know what a big posse he's got when he gets in the ring. They, they, they all know, they're all, they're all scared of making a brand because he's made himself into a brand. They're all, he, fighters all buy into this, maybe a little beatables um, talk, and they all think, well, this is Floyd Mayweather I'm fighting. Floyd Mayweather is unbeatable. C -c -c what chance am I going to have? That's, that's got to be in their minds. Every time they get in the ring, a fighter gets in the ring. They've got to be thinking to themselves, how am I going to beat Floyd Mayweather when no one else has? Whereas Marcus, whereas Marcus Maidana, the same way he did with Broner, he just does not give a shit about all the rap, rapping garbage. He doesn't give a shit about this, the money team, or let's all get, let's all have Justin Bieber, Lil Wayne walk into the ring, let's all have a silly circus, maybe this is a big celebrity. My Dana didn't give a shit and thought, you know what, I don't care who you are, we might as well be in, in a pub car park, let's have a fucking fight. And that's what happened. He, he went and had a fight with my Dana, it wasn't intimidated, didn't respect him, and showed it. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that actually because I've heard that Maidana doesn't actually follow boxing that heavily outside the ring. You know, he couldn't tell you who all the world champions are in all the divisions, or even the main divisions, and he couldn't tell you who some of the best fighters are in the world. That's what I've heard, and to be honest, it looked like that when he went in the ring, because he went in and just went, I'm going to try and fuck you up. And he didn't care about the defense, didn't care about, you know, Mayweather's rep and shit like that, and he gave him hell. Yeah, give him that for the first six rounds at least. He doesn't care about. He didn't care about Mayweather's reputation. He didn't care about his legacy that he loves to bang on about. He didn't care about all the flow moles coming to the ring with him, like Bieber and Lil Wayne and all the slimy women. He just thought, I don't care who you are. I don't care what happened in Las Vegas. I don't care that this is a big show. We might as well be just in a field. Two got two. We might as well just be two drunk guys fighting in a pub. Let's have a fight. And that's I respect him for that. He didn't let me get to his head at all. Mm. That's why he, he fought so well, in my opinion. Yeah. Though, obviously, what I mentioned before, I think Mayweather maybe underestimated him a little bit. I know Mayweather's the ultimate professional when it comes to training and stuff, and you know, he looks after himself when he stays in the gym. But when you're fighting a 12 to 1 underdog, and you've got everyone saying to you, this guy's going to have no chance, you beat guys with this style 10 times before, you can't help but think. Oh, I, I, I don't have to train extra hard to beat this guy. All I've got to do is to win the same one. So you, you can't blame anyone if they develop that mindset. And I think Floyd maybe had a little bit of that. And the third point is, I think Floyd's getting old because he is 37. I know some fighters can go on for a long time. You know, we've got Bernard Hopkins who's like nearly 50 and he doesn't look old at all. But you, 37 is not young for a sportsman in most cases. It doesn't matter how much you have to yourself. And, and you can have all the training, you can train all your life, you can look after yourself all your life. When you're in a fight, then um, your age is going to catch up with you. Fighters like Hopkins and, all, and other old fighters, they all do well because they don't have wars with their opponents. They box their opponents, they stay hold. Um, you know what I'm trying to say? They don't. They, they, they win ugly. They don't uh, have wars with their opponents at yeah, all. They and fight, Dana, yeah, they don't fight the way Mayweather did. Put it like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Mayweather was forced into a war for the first time in years, and his age definitely showed for the first time in years. Mm, that fight actually might have took years off him as well. You know, that might, really might have took some time off him, especially in his career. So, what did you reckon about the scorecards? I thought the draw scorecard was fair. I scored a draw. Man, everyone's happy. scoring it a draw. I, I, I on record, I had, I'm going to go on record, I had to fight six rounds each. But if you want to give it 7-5 to Mayweather, or even 7-5 to my family, I wouldn't argue at all. It was that kind of fight. But my personal scorecard on the night was a draw. But the score, some people saying Mayweather won by six, seven rounds. I don't know. These people are either drunk off the smell of Mayweather's farts, or they just can't score fights. <laughs> I was oh. drunk and I couldn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the, 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 the way people are sticking off of Mayweather, it's, it, they've just embarrassed themselves. We all know he's got a lot of flow moles, but so many people have shown themselves up as un, unashamed flow moles. 
all this garbage about, oh, we chose to fight that way, um, oh, Mayweather's the best, might as well never have a hope of beating Mayweather if he ever had a rematch. You know, uh, it's, it's embarrassing. It really is. Mm-hmm. I saw some one or two people saying, oh, my dad barely won a round after round four. I don't know what these people are looking at, really. If you want to have Mayweather winning, I've got no problem with that. To, to suggest that he won easily or that he chose to fight that way, you, you really have to go watch something else. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So, was this just a bad night at the office or was he on the decline? As Rory said, I think it's a bit off. I think he had a bad night at the office because he underestimated my Maidana a little bit in the sense that maybe he just thought, he bought into what everyone was saying, including us, because I set forth it as well. I thought all we had to do to win was turn up. And maybe he bought into that himself a little bit. And the fact that he is 37, he is getting old, and he was, and he was forced into a dog fight for the first time in God knows how long. I think it was all a little bit of that. And maybe, you never know, maybe in his next fight, maybe they might look a million dollars again. But I think in order to look to do that, he has to pick his opponent very wisely. He will look great against a certain type of opponent, and he won't look great against another certain type. Mm-hmm, yeah, if he wants to look great, he might as well rematch Robert Guerrero. Yeah, exactly. So, is he TBE, TBE, the best ever? No, absolutely not. And anyone who suggests he is, or anyone who even thinks that he's even in the same company as Sugar Ray Leonard or Roberto Duran, they, I'll say it again, they are just flow wolves. They haven't got a clue. He could run over a child and they would stick up for him. I, I know a lot of the times that we really hate on Floyd Mayweather, but, you know, after a performance like that, you have to just face reality. And reality is, Floyd Mayweather is not invincible. Floyd Mayweather is not just this fighter who can do anything. And Floyd Mayweather is not this fighter who will who lets his opponents look good just because he wants to entertain the fans or some rubbish. None of that. Floyd Mayweather is a very good fighter, probably the best of the last 20 years, but is he the best ever? No, he's not. He's probably not even close. And I don't care what anyone says, this fight against my diet, he did not uh, fight that way on purpose. The reason the fight was so close was because Floyd Mayweather it was not as good as people thought he was. But he's not as good as he, he's not as good as he was before because he's getting old, and because he probably under, underestimated his opponent. A slight bit, yeah. You know, I can pretty much agree with that, you know, I don't think he's the best ever. I mean, you said the best over the last 20 years, you know, I still think it's Be- up in Maybe the he's the best over 20 you know, years, I didn't say he definitely was. No, yeah, I know, I know, I know, but I'm saying it's definitely up in there because, you know, you've got a wager in people like James Tony, who's a good fighter. Roy Jones Jr. Roy, I was going to say Roy Jones Jr. next, who's got probably at, at least as good as, if not better, achievements. Here's a good question for you as well. Okay. Do you think after that fight, Floyd Mayweather should stay pound for pound for one? Do you think they can deal with a struggle like that against anyone? No. It's a question that's got to be I, asked. I don't think he should be pound for pound number one in theory, but if you look at who's 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 around, I don't know. Depends yeah. who else is around as well. Yeah, because... I'm not. I'm not definitely. I don't want to make it sound like this is just the Mayweather hate video, but it's. A question that needs to be asked in the sense that people need to get out of their heads that maybe it is just some invincible guy and that you can't ever question him, that he's the number one, whether we like him or not. People need to accept the fact that Floyd Mayweather is just not as great as he likes to make out he is, and he's, he's not as great as the money team brand or whatever wants people to believe. Yeah, but my, my, my answer to that question is this. I understand he's coming off a bad loss. Well, no, he's not. I, th- I know he's coming off a, of a bad performance that he won. Right, he won the fight. A lot of people may think it's a draw, la la la. Right, but he is fighting regularly. People like Andre Ward's pound for pound number two. When was the last time he fought, and who did he fight against? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put I'd just keep him with Andre Ward. Then. Andre Ward is not isn't in the picture as far as I'm concerned, and in, in mythical pound for pound. Um, who else? Rigging Diaw, maybe. You've got to have him near the top. It depends, skill for skill, who you, you rate, who you rate better. Bradley is just coming off a loss, so obviously he's not, and he's lost to Pacquiao in 32 times. 
you know, Pacquiao's got losses and he's at the end of his career also. Really, the whole pound for pound system needs an overhaul. Yes, yeah. With with like almost every pound for pound fighter's in the thirties, in the middle middle to late thirties now. So almost all the pound for pound level fighters are not as good as people like to think they are. Yeah, yeah, and there's guys like Roman Gonzalez, who El Chocolito, who's not even in the pound for pound as far as people are concerned. Yeah, he's undefeated, and he's destroying competition in the little weights. You know, I understand. He just doesn't get the Stuff he too, many, too many fighters like Mayweather get too much credit, and there are so many good fighters who don't get any money enough. And Rob Gonzalez is one of those fighters. I agree. I agree. So, I'm going to answer this question myself, this last question myself. And I want to thank Paul, I want to thank Rory, and I want to thank Ryan for all coming on the show. So, my last question that I'm answering myself is where does Floyd go from here? Now, a lot of people talking about a rematch, but that would be. Oh, still a hard fight for him, and you you have to wonder if he wants to go through that again. Uh, the Amir Khan fight would be a very tough fight for him because of the speed of Khan. And even though I would suggest Khan would win it, no, it wouldn't. Even though I'd suggest Mayweather would win it, I can see it being a very tough fight because, like I said, Floyd's on the decline. It'll be a whole different style. He's got to he's got to try with, and all you seem to need nowadays in order to give Mayweather a tough fight is. You need to be mentally strong. You need to go in there, throw a lot of punches, and you got to have something as well in terms of speed, if not punch power. I wouldn't say that he's got the punch power, but he's definitely got the speed, and his style would be a trick for Mayweather right now. And I'd like to see how he would suggest working with against that. Um, other than that, the realistic thing, this is what I would say Floyd's got to do now. Sit down and try and buy yourself out of, that, of the rest of that showtime contract because I can see him losing in the next year or two because Thurman would, is a bigger puncher than Maidana Thurman's got a better tank than Maidana and Thurman can throw good better shots than Maidana Maidana could he win in the rematch uh, you see 12 to 1 underdog he wasn't supposed to get win, win a round in this fight either so it's going to be a tough fight and Khan reasonably tough fight John Porter tough fight I don't see any easy fights for Floyd anymore unless he's gonna you know rematch Robert Guerrero so that's my thoughts on it that's the guy's thoughts on it I hope you enjoyed listening to us and this wasn't the hating the hating crew I mean come on I put a lot of money on Floyd to win by points and I won a lot of money on Floyd winning by points so I was happy plus I didn't have to get a tattoo on my arse that was even better but you know <laughs> the hating crew are out. <laughs> bye bye.